Um, it's clear from the testimony that we've heard today that Congress has an opportunity to act to combat the gaming tactics of Big Pharma. And I just want to say that I do appreciate what seems to be the unanimity of carefully crafting legislation, and that's what I'm currently um, trying to, to do, um, to prohibit the uh, actions that will soon be considered by the, uh, the, the these actions considered by the subcommittee. The legislation has a twofold purpose. First, it will provide the Federal Trade Commission with authority to take action against a manufacturer engaged in product hopping, and two, to um, seek remedies for these tactics, like the collection of unjust profits um, that a drug manufacturer gained as a result of inappropriate pot product hopping, and second, um, uh, my bill will allow for greater transparency in drug pricing. The goal, uh, the the, uh, um, the the bill will um, let's see. Um, well, the the goal of this um, of, of this list is to provide the American um, taxpayers with the transparency that they deserve, and to provide physicians with the with a public database to uh, research drug information because. Uh, before decisions to prescribe them to their patients um, over, over generics. So, Mr. Carrier, does the FDA currently maintain a list of products that are substantially similar um, other than a minor change in formulation? No, it does not. Is there um, currently a straightforward online resource that physicians can rely on to corroborate the things that pharma sales representatives are telling them about the drugs? No, I'm not aware of anything like that. Um, is there a common resource that patients could use to confirm whether they need to uh, need a reformulated brand drug over a generic? No, there is not. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Um, Mitchell, again, I want to thank you um, for so, so much for, for coming and sharing both your personal story and the story of so many others. Um, you said that you started on a new um, chemo drug um, just last night. How much does that drug cost, and what is um, your out-of-pocket cost? This drug is called Homilis. Twenty-one capsules in this bottle. Ah, this drug is called Pomelis. Twenty-one capsules in this bottle that I take twenty-one days off, then seven days. Uh, twenty-one days, then seven days off. Costs seventeen thousand two hundred dollars. List. My out-of-pocket under Part D is going to be north of thirteen thousand dollars a year for this drug. That's one drug that I take. My goodness. Um, can you tell why? Um, tell us why transparency around product hopping and reformulations would be helpful for you as a patient and for, and for your physicians. When a company does what has been described here by the experts on both, both of my sides, uh, it can result in a product that does not deliver any improvement for me clinically or therapeutically, may not reduce side effects, may do nothing to help me. Uh, so having that, uh, that database that you've described available for my physician or for myself, to be able to go online and find out, is this the same drug? Did it really change? Does it deliver any incremental benefit? Uh, would be very helpful in sizing up uh, choice making uh, and my ability to have a conversation with my physician about whether that's the right drug for me. I wondered if you wanted to add anything um, why you believe evergreening um, is among the most critical of the issues for patients. As I said in my opening statement, in innovation is critically important to me. It's not a theoretical matter. Uh, I need them to invent new drugs or I'm going to die sooner than I hope to. So when drug companies can evergreen, extend life inappropriately on an existing product, or build a patent thicket uh, around their product so we can't get a new drug, a generic or cheaper drug to market, when they can extend the life and profitability of old drugs, they do not spend their money to invest in new drugs. 
So for B, uh, mm. having them have to compete and having them have their period of time under Hatch-Waxman or under the ACA or under the Orphan Drug Act run out in terms of their patent and exclusivity so that they need to invest in new drugs helps me. Thank you so much.